Meanwhile on the battlefield, Giju's battle was interrupted by Sung Hoon's sudden appearance. Rhodes gets annoyed at his battle being interrupted, since he was just starting to have so much fun. While shouting don't interfere, he strike out at Sung Hoon, who gets shocked at the sudden attack directed at him. Our hero uses the binding skill to keep Rhodes in place temporary, and regains his aggro on him. Giju shouts a warning at Sung Hoon to use this chance to get out of here, and tells him he will finish up soon. While the association decided not to participate in the battle as much as possible, seeing the situation he decides to go help the Kane Guild members since the situation has changed. Rhodes remarks a mere skill like this is nothing, and uses sheer force to break the dark binding. The charges directly for Giju, saying now then the disruption is gone and resumes his assault. While shouting the battle has only just begun, he slams his sword at Giju causing a massive explosion in its wake. As the dust settles, he looks in bewilderment as his opponent has disappeared. While sitting upon a traffic light behind him, Giju says he hates to interrupt him while he's so fired up, but he has no more time left. He turns to look in the direction of the voice, Giju remarks he should end this as soon as possible. He uses his elemental dark skill, as dark energy flows into his ego reign. Meanwhile at the outskirts of the barrier, Lee Sianho is asking the association president to tell them what is going on inside. Lee Sianho asks why are the Grigoris are blocking their way with such menacing looks, could they be thinking of fighting them? The president tries to defuse the situation saying of course no, there must be a misunderstanding since the association already requested their cooperation, and as far as he knew, all of them here have accepted that request. Lee Sianho comments that the request was a bit too obstinate to call it cooperation, and the master of the Hephaestus Guild who has their headquarters here was pretty much evicted with the notice. He goes on to say that they are only trying to help block the break, so what reason does the association have to refuse their help? Then with intimidating eyes says, or could it be that something that they shouldn't know about was happening inside? Dark foreboding eye of the president stares back at him, as he starts to grin saying don't jump to conclusions guild master Lee Sianho. They are only there to maintain the barrier, to prevent any additional harm. Also they can't give the people that are risking their lives inside needless reinforcements. Suddenly Lee Sianho looks offended shoutingly questioning if was he a needless reinforcement while emitting a terrifying aura. As tensions begin to mount, both of them remain silent for a moment. Then Lee Sianho asks, if they were going to push inside by force were they thinking of fighting them? The president declares that he was, which shocks the other guild masters. As the other guild masters shout their disbelief, Taishik opens his hands out and materializes his weapon in his hand and looks towards them with conviction in his eyes, then slams his weapon onto the ground with a loud thud. As one guild master says alright let's go, but before he can finish Lee Sianho interrupts him and offers a suggestion of letting him go in alone without anyone else accompanying him. He talks with telepathy saying, please do not worry President Azura, he will not say a word about what he sees inside, and that he is on their side. Meanwhile on the battlefield, Giju uses his skill elemental dark, which can turn the body into darkness, which surrounds his body with a dark black aura. As Rhodes stares up at him, Giju says out loud binding his dark tentacles from his body heads towards him. Laughing as the dark energy wraps around him, Rhodes shouts he has already saw this skill and it doesn't work on him, but suddenly finds himself unable to break out of this binding. Elemental dark skill only looks like his appearance has changed, but what's more important is its secondary effect, which makes the power of a demonic art with the same attribute stronger. It made his binding skill strong enough to withstand Rhodes' might, and using it to drag his victim towards himself. Rhodes could only think that shit, he can't break out and he's being dragged towards this guy. Giju who has his sword ready for a powerful strike. And using the force of the pull plunges his black sword into Rhodes' head. The system notification tells him that cannibalism has been activated, egoification of player Rhodes has begun, and egoification of player Rhodes has succeeded. As the elemental dark skill fades from his body, he sits down remarking he was trying to save this as much as possible since it places a large burden on his body. Even tired, his egos reminded him he didn't have much time to waste and looking around the area, they seemed to have more of less finished things as well. Calling upon rain, he got on his wolf to move to the next location using elemental water. As he was moving across the building, he asked Brunhart how Dullahan and Hart was doing. To which Brunhart replied that they were still holding on. 
After getting their location, he wasted no time to get to that location. Meanwhile the Dullahan swung his axe at Rogers, who parried the attack, while the Lich attacked him with his flesh golem. However Rogers was beside himself, thinking this was unbelievable since his opponents were a mere Dullahan and a Lich and even with his holy sword he couldn't easily dispatch this pair of monsters. Normally he shouldn't have a problem dealing with a bunch of these bastards, and getting angry shouted goddamn small fries don't look down on him. He used his holy sword 9 and shot a burst of energy wave at the Lich. The Lich was shocked at the power of the attached and immediately commanded his flesh golem to block the incoming blow. The attack was enough to completely eradicate the flesh golem. And even the Lich took some damage. Rogers was thinking these are not ordinary monsters, since they had some level of intelligence they should have attacked him through the opening caused by this huge attack. However the Dullahan wasn't attacking him, but rather waited for the Lich to recover, as if they were just stalling for time. Considering the timing, something was strange and this couldn't be a normal break. Just at that moment Giju descended upon the battlefield, telling Rogers it's been a while. Rogers looked up with a bit of surprise, and with recognition called out Kim Giju. Putting more power into his holy sword than before, he was about to unleash the attack at the descending Giju. However at that moment, Rogers recalls Iron Shield warning him to beware of Giju's sword since it had the ability to absorb the power of holy swords. At the last moment before crossing blades, Rogers dodged back to avoid the attack instead. Giju was a little upset that Rogers figured out his ability, and L told him that Iron Shield would have informed him about it. Looking sideways at his subordinates, he told them good job for enduring this long. They both knelt down and told him it was nothing, and it was an honor to follow his command. He opened a small portal and told them to rest inside, in a flash they disappeared into the gate and it disappeared. Rogers was wondering what just happened, and was he the one that caused the break, but more importantly how could he become so strong in such a short time? Finished caring for his subordinates, Giju turned towards Rogers saying let's start our game of tag for real. Rogers only angrily glared back at him. As the thunderstorm still rages around them, Sequo and Sunghoon arrived on the scene of the battle to witness both the combatants going at it. Sequo told Sunghoon he rushed over since he was worried, but before he knew it Giju has become so strong, and Sunghoon could only agree. As they battled, Giju was taunting Rogers asking what's wrong, and what happened to make him so squishy, as he stabs Rogers' legs sending which gushed out blood. Rogers cursed thinking that his guy is using his own words against him. Lu told him that he's played long enough and told him to hurry and finish it, to which Giju agreed. As Giju prepared to launch an attack with his white sword, Rogers was thinking shit, this bastard who was nothing but an insect a while ago, and since it was too late to dodge brought up his sword to block the attack. Meanwhile at the Iron Guild Tower, Iron Shield was telling his subordinate that Rogers must have arrived in Korea by now. His subordinate asked if it was alright. To send a holy sword against someone who can absorb holy swords? Iron Shield replied that since he gave him a warning, Rogers should be alright. With a menacing expression he said that holy sword isn't an ordinary holy sword, and by the time he realizes it, it'll be too late. Back at the battlefield, just as Rogers was able to fend off the attack of the white sword, everyone was shocked at the outcome. Giju asked El what happened, something did get absorbed, but it's different from Kalyan's case wasn't it? L replied that's no longer a holy sword, but to be exact it's a corrupted holy sword. Lu interjected saying that it's closer to a demonic sword. Rogers shouts, what the hell, you're nothing special were you? He declares this is how it should be and he was going to kill Giju in the most painful way possible, as his body was becoming consumed by a green aura that was spreading from his sword. Giju remarked that since the sword was closer to a demonic sword, he asked Lu if he could do something about it and Lu replied it's not that simple. Rogers got even more annoyed shouting, what the hell has he been mumbling about since earlier, and should he really be dazing off? Shouting he was going to slice him to bits, Rogers charged at our hero laughing hysterically. Giju dodged the strike, and was surprised about something. Sunghoon seeing the attack thought to aid Giju, when Sequo told him to wait. While Giju using the sword to balance himself from falling, kicked Rogers in the chin sending him flying backwards. Giju said what the hell's wrong with this guy, hasn't he become weaker? L told him it was due to the corrupt holy sword, 
At first it'll give its user power, but in the end it'll absorb all of its user's power. Rogers coughed up blood, and slowly stood up. While clutching his chest said why is his body, then rage clouded his expression. Meanwhile Iron Shield was explaining that Nine absorbs the user's power and transfers it to its true owner. His subordinate commented that's a frightening sword, but if that's the case wouldn't your objective of planting roots in Korea become more difficult? Since it could cause a major setback if Rogers becomes too weak too quickly, but Iron Shield reassured him that he didn't need to worry about that. Since Nine was a very delicate sword. And it takes its time to encroach on its victim before they realizes it. And that's how he'll become the stepping stone for Iron Shield's revenge. Since the whole process takes around half a year to occur, there's no need for concern, although it'll be a different story if he tries to forcibly squeeze out Nine's power in a short period of time, but he doubt there would be a need for him to do that in Korea. Back on the battlefield, Rogers charged at Giju shouting you bastard, what the hell have you done to him? While Giju was easily able to fend off the attack by cutting off the arm with the sword, which caused Rogers to become bewildered. As the cut of arm and sword landed behind him, Rogers let out a loud scream of pain. As Rogers crawled on the ground towards his arm and sword, Giju could only comment to think that his revenge that he planned for months would end up like this. Opening a healing potion, he called Rogers to give him his hand, then pour the potion onto the cut-off arm. Rogers started to laugh hysterically saying have you finally realized that nothing good will come from opposing the Iron Guild? Giju countered by saying do you even know what state he was in, and told him to check his goddamn status window. Luke called him a moron, saying he's getting all giddy when they didn't even reattach his hand. Rogers while confused called up his status window, and it showed his level as one and everything else was blanked out. Shocked at what he was seeing, all he could say was his stats, his level. As Giju was saying has he finally realized, but was rudely interrupted by Rogers shouting FCK, why the hell was he level 1, even bugs are better than level 1, he's become a good for nothing level 1, and level 1 was more useless than trash. As Giju's expression became darker with each comment, Rogers continued his ranting saying it's a fate worse than death, at this Giju finally lost control and smacked Rogers saying he's gone too far. You son of a bitch. Shouting you think you're the shit, is that why you're getting the shit beaten out of you like this? As Giju took out his frustration, Rogers was clueless on why he was getting beaten. Just then Sun Hoon noticed the barrier was opening and quickly warned Giju about it, saying Lee Sianho is coming. Giju told the black and blue beaten up Rogers that he was lucky, then opened the gate and tossed Rogers towards it. As Hart appeared, he told him to use potions to keep Rogers alive and take care of the holy sword as well. As he turned towards the source of an enormous mana that he could feel from miles away. Slowly the figure of Lee Siano started to appear from a distance and as he got closer, he said as he thought, it's very strange. Stating that he can't see this situation as a mere break, asking Giju to tell him directly what has happened here. At this Sung Hoon stepped in and informed Lee Siano that he is affiliated with the association and that they are currently almost finished suppressing the break but unfortunately there were sacrifices in the Iron Guild branch. Lee Siano replied what an amusing joke since it's obvious from this situation that they all took care of them. However, they may not know this but he has made a deal with the Iron Guild. They were to allow him to meet with a person who has something he wanted. With a deranged expression said that if she doesn't want to see her successor ripped into pieces, why doesn't she show herself already, Demon King? They were all shocked at this revelation, as a voice asks is it really alright for you to do dirty shit like this when you call yourself God's Apostle? As energy converges on a location, it reveals the appearance of the Demon King and Ball. The Demon King remarks that her long-awaited reunion with her disciple was ruined. Giju looks at her in surprise, she smiles back and says it's been a while. Sung Hoon is surprised that the real Demon King was before him, and Giju can only think that she was this close, but he couldn't sense her presence at all. She comments that his reaction is quite lackluster, since she was hoping to surprise him. Remarking to save that for later, she turns to Lee Sianho asking him if he needed her elixir. He confirms that's the case, and she remarks that his vessel has become quite contaminated, but were they close enough for her to just give him an elixir? Lee Sianho wants to make a deal, but the Demon King countered by saying what if she doesn't want to saying that even an elixir won't be able to block his vessel's contamination, at most it will only slow its progress. 
If that's the case, Li Xianhao engages his battle armor and sword and said he has no choice but to fight. At this Gijiu looks at the pair of pure white swords and asks his egos, could that be a holy sword, to which Lu confirms, but L tells her master for now they are more powerful than her. As the demon king approaches Li Xianhao, she asks him if he thinks he can handle it, saying no matter how strong you are won't you have a hard time with both her and Ball as her opponents. Declaring that his place will also become a sea of fire, asking didn't he hate killing. He replies that he's in no position to split hairs, and the demon king says she understands, then teleports back to the side of Ball. With her hand stretched out to Ball, she calls his name, as he gets the elixir from his coat pocket and hands it to her. The demon king asks if they do a deal, what would he give her in exchange for it? Li Xianhao replies that including her successor, he will let everyone here live. The demon king replies that a threat, not a trade, calling him nothing more than a street thug. As she throws the elixir to him, said to add in that he won't lay his hands on her disciple for a year. Li Xianhao upon grabbing the elixir said that he understood, and he will definitely keep his promise. As he turned to leave, the demon king told him to wait and swear it on the name of his god. As they stared at each other, Li Xianhao whispered something under his breath then disappeared from view. Sung Hoon let out a sigh as he fell to the ground, saying that he couldn't even breathe properly because of the pressure. As the demon king addresses them both saying they were friends of her disciple, they could handle the rest right, since she was going on ahead with her disciple. Before they had time to react, the demon king with Gijiu disappeared in a flash of purple energy, leaving them stunned. Sometime later, Gijiu slowly opened his eyes and heard conversation between the demon king and Ball talking about his demonic eye. As the demon king noticed him awakening, Gijiu slowly sat up and looked around his surroundings, to find himself in his own basement. He was thinking the fact that she just suddenly appeared earlier, and even knows where he lives. He asked her if she was using the demonic eye to keep watch over him, and she confirmed that she can see everything that's seen through the demonic eye. Gijiu was outraged at this and shouted that's a crime, you should stay out of my personal life. The demon king just smiled slyly and asked if he was getting embarrassed, aren't he cute? And Gijiu outright denied it. Gijiu while changing the topic asked why did they all come to his house, and the demon king replied can't a master visit her disciple's house, since she wasn't here for the housewarming party, she was here now. Standing back up, Gijiu thought that he owed her a great debt, since she used three of those precious elixirs for his sake. He asked her considering even the demonic eye, just who in the world are you, and moreover Li Xianho, but he was stopped by her. She said he must have many things he wanted to ask, but don't think about them right now, and she would explain everything to him in due time. Besides, she had something more important to discuss. He was wondering what could be more important than elixirs, demonic eye, and even Li Xianho. Putting her cup down, she made a cute expression as she asked him to let her live here. This request went way over his head, and he asked pardon? Subscribe to the channel for the next part. Thank you for watching, until next time.